Today we're going to take a deep dive into the color red in ball pythons. Is it something we can actually achieve? Has it ever been done before? And what could we do to get to that color if we haven't? Before we get started, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps the channel out, helps us grow, and continue to bring you content like this. So, red. Has it been done before? The answer is no. True reds have not been done. And what I mean by true reds is in the sense of what you're thinking about the color blood, fire engine red, anything like that. What we have done is a burnt orange. This burnt orange gives a appearance of some rusty reds and rusty red is just a burnt orange. Now to go back on what I just said, orange is in and of itself created by combining yellow and yes, red. So by the definition of color theory, which is a science, orange is red. But what we're trying to do is achieve an actual red, like on this 4th of July decoration, or one of our dog's songs, or the red on this painting, or the red in the bricks, which is a color I think would be more obtainable in terms of a red when you're going the route of the burnt orange. And I'll get to my theory on how we could possibly get to this in several different ways. So where are we now? Well, there's a lot of genes that, again, are that burnt orange. Red stripe, red gene, redhead. They all have red in the name, but they don't actually appear red. Every one of these has a very common theme. When it comes to red and ball pythons, all I've ever seen is a dark burnt orange. Some of these genes, like red stripe, they are very subtle, similar to how yellow belly acts. By themselves, they just don't seem all that incredibly impressive, but when layered with other combinations, they start to shine. And these are the little genes that just push the envelope ever so slightly forward. And this is exactly what I mean by that. The head clown isn't going to show any thing here. It's the red stripe that we're seeing and realistically all you can kind of see is a little bit more brighter of a snake. But let's go ahead and add Mojave. Now this one is also again Het Monsoon which has been told to have some markers but not like this. The Mojave has been significantly darkened and has brought in some burnt orange. A little bit of a reddish hue now exists in this snake whereas normally they don't look like this. And here's a really good example of a black pastel red stripe yellow belly Wookie Clown. Wookie serves to darken it up, bring in some very chocolatey undertones, and Red Stripe is going to bring in that red. So this snake looks like cooling lava. Within the pattern, you start to see what I mean by rust. It looks like different tones of rust. The back of it seems to have little hints of red trying to peek through. Obviously, even the oranges are very burnt. Here's another example with a black pastel Wookie Red Stripe Yellow Belly Clown. Here's another one that has very red hues throughout its darker patterns and what's important here is the contrast again I always love contrast because contrast can highlight and make you see things that might not necessarily be there even so when you have these rusty oranges next to the darker burnt blacks and oranges that just kind of go through here and shadow amongst itself I really think that those play tricks on your mind to create a recipe that it is a slightly red snake there's nothing taking away from this snake at all by the way but they there is no real red. Here's another example using redhead, a spot nose inchy redhead clown. Again, that contrast of the very bright yellowy sides as opposed to the dark, maybe dried blood appearance of the darker pattern. I don't know, maybe that's a little morbid, but I like to watch a lot of horror movies, so that's what I think of. Again, very burnt out orangish hues. Obviously there's the blacks, but then in between that, you do have those very burnt out oranges. Going back to red stripe, here's a super red stripe stripe yellow belly clown. Again, you have a lot of these very rusty kind of reds coming in. Just to pivot to another example where there's black pastel in there as well, you have a just ever so slightly more dark version of this same snake. Sunset is another one that kind of flirts with that really nice orange or the rusty reds. This is a great example of very close to a reddish cinnamon enchi sunset. This one here specifically hits these different colors that a lot of people would say looks brown. And in fact, Sunset gets accused of browning out quite a lot. But again, there's no red, just a very beautiful rusty undertone. This is what I'm looking for. Either this, which personally I don't want to say never, but I don't think this red is really obtainable. But this red I think is very possible. So what are my theories on how we could get to red? Certainly we could keep finding more genes, we could keep experimenting, but how do we get there on our own? Let's just say all we ever have to work with is what we have right now. 
I think that we get there by line breeding polygenic traits. Wolf Python breeders are all about dominance, incomplete dominance, recessives, but there are polygenic traits in ball pythons. The gecko community almost in general relies on polygenic traits. The Deadpool gargoyle gecko is a perfect example. You take one fairly red gargoyle gecko or crested gecko, breed it to another very red crested gecko or gargoyle gecko, and you just keep that process up. Not taking a slightly duller one ever. You just keep breeding the reddest ones you have together and watch your offspring become redder with each generation. Polygenic genes are already co-named in our ball python community. Barnhart Black Pastel is one of them. Take for example this Black Pastel here. Black Pastel will often just appear a little bit darker, a little bit more granulated, almost like GHI-ish. But look at the Barnhart Black Pastel. Almost looks like there's more than just one thing going on here. You have black pastel, so you obviously have very dark blacks, but it brings in some oranges and a little bit something going on with the sides. You see Barnhart Black Pastel being used quite a bit with Orange Dream. You see the El Diablo from Chris Hernan also had the Barnhart line Black Pastel, and that is a bit of a different looking snake, right? And Barnhart Black Pastel is Black Pastel, but it is a line that has been identified as an exceptional example of Black Pastel. This is why I think that line breeding polygenic traits in ball pythons are going to get us closer to red than just tinkering around with genes here and there and not that there's anything wrong with that that is certainly something that we should continue doing but if we want to push the envelope a little further we should take notes from our friends in the gecko community i feel like we're leaving things on the table by not paying attention to polygenic traits and i think that that is at least in my opinion how we could possibly reach red one day. One more thing before we go, I wanted to show you how easy it is to mislead people when it comes to colors in ball pythons. We might be talking about red here, but this really applies to anything. This is a snake that we have here. It is a monarch ball python, absolutely beautiful, but these are not its natural colors. These are. This didn't take very long of editing for my brother to do. Now, obviously this is a bit of an extreme example, and you might think, how could someone be tricked by this? But people have been tricked. In our video where we talk about all the colors of the ball pythons, we had a thumbnail with a green snake. The same picture, in fact, that we've shown you here. That one was very hastily done. 10 minutes, and we were able to get comments, people thinking that that was actually a snake that we had. People thought that that was real, and we spent very little time on it. If you look up a video from Muscle Serpents University, they cover a scam alert that had to deal with a red ball python. And this is a video there's a video out there of this snake moving around. Obviously in this part it looks orange, but they are thought to have done this by painting the snake with a harmless paint. Just be careful. It's very easy to edit all sorts of things to make them look a certain way. Photo editing doesn't take too much. You can do it with simple shaders to an extent, and it doesn't take much time to do a really good job. This isn't even considering the absolute insane AI that has popped up these days. Don't fall for color scams. I hope you enjoyed. We, I think, are going to delve into the other colors as well, similar to this, and we'll probably have better results because they'll be possible or have already been done. If you like this video, you can actually check out the video we referenced in this dealing with all the colors of all the ball pythons right here.